Hey everybody, New Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. Still on the common route, which encompasses most of this, uh, first disc here, but making choices towards Sanin. We've got our new headquarters here, and I can't remember if we finished our tour or not. So let's continue reading and check it out. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Our headquarters had changed and expanded, matching the Shinsengumi's growth itself. But increasing the number is not always a good thing. The more people there were under one banner, the less likely all of them would hold the same beliefs and ideals. There would be differences and conflicting opinions, just like what happened with Ito and his men. But I didn't want the Shinsengumi to change. Kondo's dream sounded wonderful, and I could see it coming true because of the men that had surrounded him. With those thoughts in my head, my first night in the Fudodo headquarters slowly passed. Ah, first night in a new place. I would never be able to sleep. November, 1867. Ah, if only I had stuck out that last video for two more minutes. November, 1867. A gust of wind stripped some of the last stubborn leaves from the trees and set them skittering across the Kyoto street. It was cold, and it bit into me through my clothes. I shivered. It's almost winter, isn't it? Yeah, the wind's gotten pretty cold lately. Will you keep me warm? Still, we don't have it too bad during the day. I can't imagine how cold it gets for the night, guys. He laughed as his breath turned like smoke. Ah. <sighs> my fingertips were icy cold, and I blew my breath on them. Are your hands cold? Would you like me to hold them? It's not your route. I remember when we did this on your route. It was lovely. N no I'm not that cold. I'll be fine. Oh? I noticed someone walking toward us. Hey, guys. Ain't today great? He's the only one not affected by the cold. I thought it was all three of you. You and... You two and Heisuke. You three had snowball fights in short sleeves. What? You're one to talk, man. Look at what you're wearing. The bickering might have been odd to a passerby, but I knew it for a sign of deep friendship that it was. Hmm? What's up? Why are you grinning like that? Cause it's so cute! Probably thinks your face is funny, Shimpachi. You really ought to do something about that. No, it's just, um... Well, um... I was just remembering when we met up like this before. Like the time we met Kaoru. I was with Ogita and Heisuke then, though. More than six months had passed since Saito and Heisuke left to join the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb. Far too long! Come back, guys! Harada and Shimpachi's faces turned grim as I trailed off. I shook my head, hoping vainly to cast off unpleasant thoughts. Err, uh, I just mean, there's been so much going on lately. It makes me nostalgic. The Shinsengumi has changed. Hell, so has the rest of the world. Yes. But, man, who would have thought there would come a day when we'd be promoted to Jiki-san? It was right around the time when we moved our headquarters to Fudodo Village, right? I remember there were a handful of people who said they were going to leave, and it was a big debacle. There is a distinction, though, between those who were able to leave the Shinsengumi, and then those who were forced to enter the Fury Corps. Kondo seemed to be thrilled about becoming promoted to Jiki-san, but... How do you guys feel about this? I'm not really a fan. Yeah, I didn't do all this just so I could be a retainer for the Shogun. Kondo's promotion had changed the Shinsengumi's relationship with the Daimyo, where before we'd only been philosophically aligned with the Shogun, now we answered directly to him. For some people, that was a serious problem. Rumors floated around as we began to move to our new headquarters. So what's this going to change for us going forward? I heard that a few months ago that the Imperial Prince had become the new Emperor. I think there was a restoration of Imperial rule last month, right? Supposedly, the Tokugawa Shogunate returned power from the government to the Emperor, right? Yeah, supposedly it was Ryoma Sakamoto's idea. Who we will be dealing with, hopefully soon. I heard that because of that, the Satsuma and Choshu were really pissed at him, because they were going to use this opportunity to fight for power. Well, he already had a target on his back from the Shogunate supporters, so now he's basically hated by every ronin in Japan. Ah, poor guy. Hope he's really good at dodging. But then, 
Now there's no just cause for the Satsuma and Choshu to start a war. Oh, for fun. So, for now, I guess they're going to just keep things like they are. And that's right. The Shogunate is going to remain as it is, and the Tokugawa will still be the largest daimyo clan in Japan. Still, there's the chance of the Satsuma having something up their sleeves. But we have no way of knowing. Well, as long as the Shogunate doesn't call their bluff, nothing's going to happen. I see. As I looked around the city, it seemed like he had a point. Nothing much seemed to have changed. Inns were still bustling with travelers. Tea shops were still smelling delicious. You could still smell the burning incense from the temples scattered throughout the town. Life continued just as it always had, regardless of what the Shogun was or wasn't doing. The city must look the same as it always had, but time flowed on regardless, and a great wave was coming that would carry all of us away. I looked up at Nagakura, and something occurred to me that I hadn't thought of before. Before I realized what I was doing, I'd opened my mouth. I didn't realize you were so smart, Nagakura. You know a lot about politics. You didn't realize? Wait. Just what did you think of me? <laughs> that you were just a big muscle head? Is that what Cheezer thought? I didn't think that, but maybe Cheezer did. I just think you're a big adorable teddy bear. Um, er... Let's continue on our rounds. It's winter, which means it'll get dark faster. You're trying to dodge the question. <sighs> I think you're a food thief and... a heavy drinker? There was a man named Roma Sakamoto. He was a ronin from the Tosa domain and had allied himself with the Satsuma and Choshu domains as well. For a time, the Kyoto Judiciary Commissioner, Mima Warigumi, and even the Shinsengumi were desperate to find him. After his orchestration of the restoration of imperial rule, however, rules were passed down to leave him alone. Is he untouchable now? I only had a general idea of who he was and what he'd done, but even I had figured out he was an important person, so when I heard I know I mentioned him, I listened. Ryoma Sakamoto has been assassinated. You serious, Gen? Did they know who did it? Sakamoto had a lot of enemies. It could have been imperialist or loyalist. Hell, it could have just been personal. In which case, my money's on Miura and Kishu. Huh. You think maybe they're looking at us for this? Damn. If the bastard was going to get killed anyway, I should have done him in. That's, uh, not very funny coming from you. Because you never know when he means it. In fact... Weren't we specifically told to leave him alone? I had never met Sakamoto. In fact, I barely knew who he was. But I felt somehow that his death would shake the country to its core. As you all know, there was a decision made far above us, and Kondo was ordered to leave Ryoma Sakamoto alone. Unfortunately, the rest of the country is unlikely to see it that way. A scabbard belonging to a member of the Shinsegumi was found at the scene of his death. There has been a request for an official inquiry. A scabbard? Is that really enough evidence? If it isn't, I'm sure they'll just fabricate more. It's obviously a ruse. Who are they saying it belonged to anyway? Actually, they say it was yours, Harada. What? Really, Sano? Damn. Wish you bought me with you. <laughs> Knock it off, Okita. Besides, my scabbard's right here. Man, this is idiotic. If you're going to make crap up, do it better. I don't suspect you, and neither does anyone else here. Unfortunately, I doubt the rest of the nation will extend you the same courtesy. I imagine they're having trouble determining the real culprit. There was talk that Kyutaro Miura from Kishu asked the Shinsengumi to kill Ryoma. Miura? That was the man Nagakura had mentioned. He had some sort of personal quarrel with Sakamoto, which made him a suspect. I'm sure there's plenty of people who'd love to pin this one on the Shinsengumi. But, unless someone did it and lied about it, there's no way it was us. Unless Sanin decided to go do a little work off the books. The room fell silent. How is Sanin these days? Our reputation is grisly enough, but even I think his night rounds are bad these days. It was true, Sana was acting stranger and stranger. Although I didn't want to believe it, I had to admit it wasn't that difficult to imagine him doing something like that. 
When I passed him on occasion in the hallways, his eyes were dry and thirsty, as if he was always, always hungry for blood. We'll have to be careful then. We can't let people learn about the Furies. About that. Oh, hey Kondo, Hijikata. Whoa. Saito, what the heck are you doing here? Just visiting. I thought I was dreaming for a second. But there was no doubt. The man who'd followed Kondo and Hijikata into the room was the man who'd left to join the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb, Saito himself. I missed you! Oh, hello Saito. It's been a while. What happened to the guard? What are you talking about, Inoue? There's no way Hijikata would allow anyone from the guard here. We're prohibited from even talking to them. Uh, just shut up, alright? Starting today, Saito's back in the Shinsengumi. What? What? Hold on a second there, Hijikata. We're glad he's back. Don't get me wrong, but... What happened with the guard? Anito? You're mistaken, but understandably... I was never one of Ito's supporters. In fact, Saito joined Ito and his men as a spy, under Toshi's direct orders. Yeah, see, it's so hard for me to not say these things. <laughs> as somebody who's played the first game already, it's so hard for me not to spoil them. I'm like, so glad Saito's back. He's like the perfect person to send as a spy, though, isn't he? He has the perfect poker face. And with that, everything suddenly made sense. They say that to fool your enemy, you must first fool your allies, and Saito had been doing just that. Well, come on, Saito. It's not fair for you to go off and have fun without letting me in on it. Oh, well, spying isn't your thing. You wouldn't have had any fun. Man, you just about scared the pants off me. Not cool, Kondo. This was all top secret. I'm sorry I had to keep it from all of you. It was a surprise, to be sure but I was glad we'd have Saito back with us again. I gave him a tentative smile, but he only sighed and shook his head. It's too early to feel relieved. The last six months in the guard have made it clear. Ito and his followers are going to take action against the Shinsengumi. What sort of action? Ito is going to expose the Fury Corps to discredit the Shogunate. There's even talk that he's working with the Satsuma to that end. If the existence and creation of the monstrous Furies was to become public knowledge, the Shogunate's reputation would be irreparably damaged, and the Shinsengumi would undoubtedly suffer as well. Even I could predict that. There's more. Ito plans to assassinate the chief of the Shinsengumi. Y you mean Kondo? <laughs> Kondo's face was tense, but he kept silent. He glanced over at Hijikata. The guard is moving to destroy the Shinsengumi. You've already heard about Sakamoto, right? Yeah, some crap about me being the killer. Right. Well, you had the guardians of the Imperial Tomb to thank. They've been spreading the rumor that Kyotaro Miura of Kishi hired the Shinsengumi, and that Harada put the sword in him. Miura insisted that he didn't do it, but there may be dumbasses who believe that rumor may attack us. So... Saito is going to be guarding Miura for now. If it looks like he just left and then came back, it won't be too hard for Ito to put two and two together. I understand. Until this matter is settled, it is better that I am not seen here. Here, Hijikata paused for a moment. The room was utterly silent. Every one of us could sense that what came next would be very important. <sighs> Kashitaro Ito. It's not enough for you to expose the Fury Corps. You have to try and kill Kondo too, huh? He spoke quietly, almost to himself, as if sharing a final moment with a former comrade. Then he looked up, and when he spoke, his voice was like cold steel, the voice of a demon. It's too bad it has to be this way, but we don't have a choice. Ito dies. Hmm, I suppose you're right. It can't be helped. Kondo nodded, and that was that. The Shinsengumi would kill Kashitaro Ito. First, we'll invite Ito to Kondo's second home. I'll be there too. Once he's dead, we can use Ito's corpse to lure the rest of the guard and kill them. Nagakura, Harada, I'm assigning you and your divisions to this. Take care of it. Hey, Hijikana. Who do you want me to kill? No one. You're staying here in bed. 
You still got that cough, don't you? You're sick. Saito will be here for a few days, so you'll have someone to play with. So, you're telling me that you don't want to let me participate in the assassination of the person who's trying to kill Kondo. You're a real bastard, Hijikana. It all seemed very calculated for murder. I hadn't realized I'd been sitting still, in shock, until I felt a gentle tap on my shoulder. Saito? This will be the end of the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb. If we're going to return Heisuke to the Fold, it must be now or never. Ugh! He was right. If they meant to kill the guard, that included Heisuke. I couldn't keep sitting still, so I ran over to Hijikata. Um, Hijikata? What? What are you going to do with Heisuke? He's part of the guard now. Isn't that obvious? We'll save him, of course. Magakura said it as if it was obvious, but got cut off. No, he fights us, he dies. W what? My mind went blank. I couldn't contain my heart from how fast it beat. No, you can't mean that. My voice started to shake. You're lying, right? I mean, you've known Heisuke for a long time, he's your friend. Hijikata stood up as if he wanted to push me away, and he left the common room. You're actually going to order them to kill Heisuke? So just because he left the Shinsengumi, are you saying you no longer care if he dies or not? Of course we care. Huh? I know that deep down, Toshi wants to save him too. But there's no way we could live without giving the command to kill a comrade who was part of our family for years. Kondo appeared to be gripping his fists so tightly that it almost looked like he was bleeding. That alone said it all. I realized in that moment... How much Kondo was suffering. How much each of them was suffering, even Hijikata. I'm sorry for... for saying that. No, no. No need to apologize. It's expected. It makes me happy, quite honestly. I'm glad people care for Heisuke. Kondo let out a slow breath, then looked up at me and smiled. He turned to Nagakura and Harada and spoke in a low voice. I'm asking you this not as your chief, but as Isami Kondo. Let Heisuke live, and, if you can, try and convince him to come back. Got it. His life is in our hands, huh? That is a lot of responsibility. What should I do? What could I do? I trust everything's clear. If you have any questions, now is the time. Wait. Kondo turned around and looked very surprised. I haven't been given any orders. I would like to help. This is a... dirty job. This is nothing like the Ikeda Inn or Hamagori Rebellion. You really shouldn't be involved. It was true. This wasn't a patrol or even a guarding mission. This was the assassination of a former comrade and an attack on men who'd split from the Shinsengumi. I... I still wanted to help. Which I would have thought I would have to stay home to be with Sanin, but nope. I guess... It's important to get he to be with Heisuke for this particular transition. Still, I wanted to do what I could. It might be my last chance to see Heisuke. Please, let me go. I won't get in the way. This isn't like anything you've done before. You understand that, right? We're killing someone who used to be one of us. Much as we don't want to, we might even have to kill Heisuke. Can't I go see Heisuke before we attack? I know. It's not something to be taken lightly. I knew that the Shinsengumi had carried out these sort of black operations before. There was no way I could have stayed with them, as long as I had and not known, but I couldn't just let them shoulder all the responsibility. I was done looking away until the deed was done. No more. Perhaps it's presumptuous of me to say so, but... I consider myself a member of the Shinsengumi. And because we're going through this... I want to help everybody. Then you're determined to do this, I see. His face had lost its usual warmth. It wasn't anger or cruelty that it showed now, but the gravity of a general addressing his men. Tell me then, how do you intend to help? I had already decided. I would... I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Hmm. I'm unsure what I can ask you to do, though. We'll figure out something. That day, Kondo asked me to visit Dr. Matsumoto. Kondo had told me that I could return at whatever hour I wanted, so I took my time getting there, but... 
I had a suspicion that this was their method of watching out for me, to avoid my involvement with the assassination, if at all possible. The person who I had accompanying me was... I apologize, Yamazaki. I'm sorry that you had to come with me to the doctor's shop. Please, do not worry. I understand why the chief asked this of me. No, it's not about that. I just think that if you weren't here, you'd be off doing something way more important. And perhaps unpleasant. Pay no mind to things like that. Their mission should be going well, regardless of whether I'm with them or not. I see. When Yamazaki and I returned to the compounds, we heard many different voices chatting inside. I wonder what's going on. It seems everyone's returned. Inside, there was a large commotion going on, and then we heard a familiar voice call out to us. Jizuru, Yamazaki, is anyone around? I'll be right there. The tone of Nagakura's voice was alarmed, and it gave me a bad feeling. As I stepped into the dojo, which seemed to be the heart of the commotion, I was dumbfounded. Heisuke! Heisuke was sprawled along the floor, covered in his own blood. What happened, Nagakura? They got to him. Just take a look at Heisuke now. His wounds are too severe. There's nothing I can do here. He needs to see Dr. Matsumoto immediately. Time is not a luxury we can afford right now. Carry Toto to the back of the compounds. Wait, what do you mean the back? If the doctor is going to treat him, it should be right here. Follow what I am saying. Toto will be dead before we bring him to Dr. Matsumoto's. Is that what you want, Nagakura? Of course not, but what are you going to do to him in the back? Take a wild guess. I, too, have no intention of letting him die. Sonin, don't tell me you're going to make him drink the water of life. That decision is not mine to make. I'm going to leave that for Toto to decide. Screw that. What are you, a demon? By this point, Nagakura was screaming furiously at Sonin, going so far as to point a sword at him. I am no demon, but I am a fury. If you aim to kill me, be sure to go for my heart or behead me. You guys, now is not the time for this. Toto will die at this rate. I knew that. Then, I am going to be the one to make the final call. Is that clear? Nagakura sheathed his sword, as if silently resigning to Sanin's suggestion. Damn it. Nagakura left us with that last outburst, and he stormed off. Watching that, I... remain here with Heisuke. I stayed behind and I timidly looked towards Sanin. Sanin looked back at me, and we locked eyes for a minute. Do you think me a demon as well? It is fine. Think of me as you will. However, I find it equally egregious for us to let him die willingly when there are other solutions to which we can look. Well, I couldn't find the words. What would my doctor of a father have done? My wish is for Toto to live. If you share this desire, then stay out of my way. I will leave him in your hands. Understood. Please take care of Heisuke. Thank you, Yukimura. Leave the rest to me. Toto certainly would not want you to see him in pain. <sighs> Before Sonin could go, I stood up and I ran back to my room. The attack on the watch, as well as the assassination of Ito, later became known collectively as the Abarano Koji incident. An unexpected turn from both the demons and the Satsuma from their trap laying resulted in a number of casualties for the Shinsengumi and the watch, including Heisuke's fatal wound. In order for Heisuke to live, he had no choice but to drink the water of life. While this was going on, Chikage Kazuma took the time to strike at the heart of our compound. The serum bought into the Shinsengumi by my father was now slowly eating all of them away. My heart began sinking from the weight of all of this. November, 1867 I was making my way to the area of the compound the Fury Corps was restricted to, Determined to speak with Sanin. I just really needed to talk to him about that night. 
Sonnen! I spotted him alone in the hallway and called out to catch his attention. Yukimura, what are you doing here? My appearance seemed to have flustered him. He came toward me quickly, eyes scanning in every direction. You didn't forget you were recently attacked by furies, did you? I'm surprised no one has informed you that you shouldn't come here unattended. Um, I'm sorry, but... I really needed to speak with you. <sighs> he must have caught something from the tone of my voice because he paused and thought for a moment. The words when they came were slow and deliberate. Yukimura, I'm sorry, but I cannot converse with you here. Oh, I think this is the other scene of his from Zuisoroku. A few are currently in an unstable state at the moment, and there is much work to be done. Ah, uh, you're right. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Of course he would be busy. I felt horrible for not realizing it before coming. I bowed to excuse myself. With a strained laugh, he leaned in and whispered, I will stop by your room later. We can discuss things in detail there. And that sounds very promising. Eh? Speechless, I could only nod. I look forward to it. I returned to my room. After an indeterminate time, as if hours had passed when it likely wasn't very long, I heard a soft voice outside my door. Come in. We settled inside my room and Sanan began to speak. I assume you wish to ask about Okita and Toto, correct? E yes Unfortunately, I'm not allowing anyone to see them until they stabilize. His voice was matter-of-fact, and his expression brooked no argument. The process of becoming a fury includes a period of rejection by the body. No one would want to be seen in such a state. I understand. I know you are likely feeling conflicted, but you must remember, regardless of how it occurred, they themselves chose to take the water of life. His tone had lost its flatness. Now it was almost as if he was trying to convince me. Toto reached for it because he sustained a mortal wound. His desire to live was such that he made his choice. We've known each other for a very long time, so I'm glad he survived, but... I have a feeling he will come to question whether his decision was the correct one. His brow wrinkled, and his eyes lowered. I could see clear concern for Heisuke on his face. He was truly worried about him. <sighs> Sana blinked as if just remembering I was there, and then rushed to reassure me. The progress is going well. There is no need to worry. Uh, okay. The words were kind, though the tone was cold and clinical. It was as if he was building a wall between us, pushing me away. He would have never done anything like that before. His demeanor seemed colder now, crueler. Some fate. I thought it'd be enough if I turned into a fury. Huh? The self-derision and pain that surfaced in his laugh tore at my heart. His voice lowered into a mumble. I made sure I was prepared for everything before I chose to take this path. I had no fear of myself changing. However, I had hoped. I had wished that they would never have to go through this. Sanin. His head turned away, hiding his face, but not before I saw a myriad of conflicting emotions, like anger, even sadness appear. After a moment, Sanin squared his shoulders and bought his head up. But it's too late now. They're furies. Most of the fury core was wiped out by the recent attack. This new blood, so to speak, is important. He will soon learn that I will not treat him as living warriors, while under my command, but as a fury. The smell he gave me was pleasant enough, if not for the edge that was just a little off. Hate me if you wish. What I'm doing is inhumane. The cruel twist to his words made me sad. I... I will leave him to you. As I did earlier. I turned to Sanin and bowed. I spoke from my heart. I'll leave him in your hands. You became a fury first. When their suffering begins, I'm sure you're the only person they can rely on. So, Sanin gave a troubled sigh. You are quite the odd one. Even after all this, you still trust me. B but I knew that he was still the same inside. He hadn't changed at all. Seeing him use the power of the Fury so often and relying on them so heavily made me frightened. But I hadn't forgotten who he really was. 
The words I wanted to say to tell him that wouldn't come out, regardless of how hard I tried. Sonnen didn't notice and continued speaking. Because you are concerned, I'll do what I can. I promise I shall look after them and guide him in his transition into fury. Sonnen, thank you very much. All the strain was gone from Sonnen's face. Our agreement seemed to bring him peace. Well, it's time to wish you goodnight, Yukimura. I apologize for keeping you up at such a late hour. Ah, the one that asked you. Uh, um, Sonnen? He turned to leave, but paused at the threshold when I called out to him. He glanced back at me. It's been very cold lately. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Have you been sleeping well? I know a lot of things are going on right now, so you might not be resting. <sighs> uh, um, well... He raised an eyebrow. Your face has been kind of... frightening lately, and I... Every time I saw him, it looked like he was silently suffering, and I couldn't help but feel anxious for him. Sighing, he padded over to me, closing the distance between us so much that the fabric of his sleeve brushed my arm. Time for a pretty picture. I love that look. It's so cute. Sonnen? His eyes caught and held mine. He leaned down so we were the same height, his face filling my vision. The look in his eyes was soft. Most people are only concerned with themselves in a time like this. But you, you give yourself to those in need. I am an adult. It would be my own fault if I fell ill. My well-being is my own responsibility. That may be true, but that doesn't mean I'm not still worried about you. I clenched my fists, raised my chin, and stared. He was trying to pacify me, but I wouldn't let him. My face grew more troubled, and a sigh spilled from his lips. Sometimes, I find myself concerned about your kindness, Yukimura. I am fine. Please don't worry. <sighs> The tone of his voice indicated he'd said the final word. It was pointless to argue any more. Uh, okay. Reluctantly, I nodded, and he stepped back, breaking our eye contact. He smiled mysteriously and chuckled under his breath. You managed to get me to be kind tonight. Uh, um, what does that mean? His chuckle bubbled up into a full laugh. His words when he spoke, were deliberately evasive. If I start feeling sympathy for others, it will cause all kinds of problems. Anyway, good night again. Sweet dreams. Oh! He swiftly walked off before I could stop him. I don't know what to think. I hadn't spent enough time with him to accurately see his true face behind the slippery words he liked to use. But... I think I can trust him. Some of the things he said did frighten me more than I wanted to admit, but he was a good, kind person at heart. I wanted to believe that, so I decided to hold on to my faith in him and not doubt the course of action he chose to follow. I should have been thinking about what dangers the future held in store for us, but instead I felt calm. Well, you can't stress yourself out all the time. December, 1867 yeah, and I was waiting for the end of that scene to stop this video because I didn't want to cut it there. But yeah, it ran a little bit long, but it was worth it to cut it in a decent spot, I think, because I actually knew that scene. All right, well, I hope to see you in the next episode to see more stuff with Son. It looks like we are starting to lean a little bit more in his direction. Chapter 4 is almost over, so we should be on his exclusive route soon, although there won't be much of it, I don't think. But otherwise, I'd also love to see you in my other videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.